Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sheen and on this channel we explore strategies on how to help women advance in their careers, but the tips are also useful to men. So welcome and let's jump into today's video. So as you know, or you may not know, we are now in the month of Ramadan and Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. It is a very important month for Muslims. We have been prescribed to fast during the month of Ramadan um, from dawn to dusk um, for about 30 days, depending on um, the sighting of the moon. It is a holy month for all Muslims. We're all very excited about this month. It's a chance to rekindle our faith. And also it brings the community together, especially for me, it's the first time seeing it in a Muslim country. It's a completely different experience. Um, but it is also very challenging, as you can imagine. There's no water, no food, no drinks throughout the day. And um, it is my first time doing it working full time as well. I mean, I used to work last time, last year during Ramadan, but that kind of working hours was a lot more manageable than currently. So now I'm working full time, long hours during Ramadan. And I've asked around a little bit um, with my friends who have done it for many years and I've asked on Instagram as well and I've gotten a lot of useful tips and I thought I would put them together and share them with you as to what's helping me through Ramadan as I work full time. So let's get into it. The first thing is talk to your manager or the head of your team. In my experience this one time and even last year is Whenever you try to talk to the person who's in charge of you or you report to, they are very open, very flexible and very understanding. Even companies, you know, they will send out emails telling everyone that they should be a bit more aware that Ramadan is starting, what is Ramadan and how to make the workload better for your team members and how to work around their times in order to make it easier for them. So for me, this has worked really well. Um, talk to my manager and making sure that my iftar time is protected so that I can break my fast, I can pray, I can eat properly and have a little bit of rest and then get back to work if I need to get back to work. But at least I know that from six to eight, for example, is completely protected for me. And that's been really useful. I've also been offered um, the flexibility of starting a bit later in the morning and finishing a bit later. Um, so that's good for me because I wake up for suhoor or sehri, whatever you call it. So that's when we start the fast. So I wake up in the morning for that and then after that I go back to bed and waking up again can be quite challenging So the later you get to start the better So for me, I start at 10 a.m. Now which gives me at least four to five hours sleep again, which is wonderful and very well appreciated So definitely talk to your team talk to your manager and ask them what is suitable for you The second thing is to adjust your schedule. So as I touched on briefly previously is that now you can change how you work, especially if you have the flexibility, of course, depending on your work and who you work for, but adjust your schedule so that you are able to, first of all, get enough sleep because that's really important to help you throughout the day. And secondly, to make sure that you are tapping into the pockets of time where your brain is the most active because it still has energy as opposed to right before iftar when we all literally just struggle to even put words together. So I filmed a video about my schedule in Ramadan and how I'm working full time in Ramadan. So if you want to check it out, you can watch the vlog here. But um, the main point uh, of what how I'm trying to make it work for me is that I know that when I wake up in the morning, this is the time where my brain has the most energy because I just ate and then I slept and then I woke up. So I still have all my energy. So this is when I will schedule all my really brain heavy tasks, right? So all the big tasks that I have to do at work, I will schedule them to be at the start of my day so that I can get through the difficult work, the ones that will be quite um, draining on my energy as well when I am at my top in terms of energy. So then that, that gets drained throughout the day. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, I will keep things that might not require brain energy that much, that are just repetitive work or admin work that I can just do while being brain dead, right? Um, so that's one way to do it. And the second thing is, for example, now that we're not taking lunch time, you can use that time to do whatever will reinvigorate energy into you, right? Some people pray, some people are mindful, some people just want to be quiet, some people nap. And I think I've been doing 20 to 30 minutes nap during the day, and that's been helping me. Of course, this is from a place of privilege because I work from home and as in I don't work from home but we are working remotely at the moment we have the flexibility of going into the office when we want to or working from home when we want to and I've been following a bit of like going to the office for two days a week um, so for the remaining days 
at home during lunchtime, I just take a power nap for 20 to 30 minutes and I feel so much better when I wake up. So yeah, there we go. Basically plan the most heavy lifting that you have to do at the start of your day. Try to schedule your time so that it moves around a bit so you can sleep better while also protecting times that are important to you. For example, prayer times and iftar time. Number three is set your intentions. I know I feel the same, but I know that during this month when you feel like you're constantly working all your time and energy is going into doing your job for example or studying you can feel like you are missing out on the blessings of this month i totally understand this feeling and i can relate so much but one big thing about you know our religion is that everything is about intention setting whatever you do um the outcome or the value of that action is entirely based on your intention so therefore you know sit down and think about why are you working so you know for example for me thinking about the fact that i'm working of course to pay my bills to get to get paid right so i'm working so that i can get paid and that money i can help my family i can help myself and of course you need to give to charity as well so you know that this money is being put to good use right and also i am working in order to earn a halal income so that's good and then once you have the money for me for example it's also a way for me to then in the long term think about ways where i can leave the job and be more you know um doing stuff on my own and going more into the content creation aspect so all of this is the stepping stone to something else you know so rethinking about why you are doing all of this resetting your intentions and knowing that you're doing this while keeping god in mind while keeping your faith in mind will help you see the clarity through all these things and that you're not just doing this because you want to do this kind of thing so whenever you're feeling this way, you know, just take five minutes and think about, okay, for example, if you're studying towards a degree or you are working, think, why am I doing this again? Oh, I'm doing it to earn halal income in order to help myself and help people around me, give to charity. And also the job that I'm doing, is it harming anyone? Is it doing good for anyone? Um, you know, all of this, just putting it clear into your head that I am doing this with a purpose, with a goal in mind, and this is my intention, and I am doing it hopefully with the blessing of God, right? So then that's fine, and you are still doing all of this together. And then, of course, you know, just making sure that you are doing your prayers, and I know people are a lot more flexible at work. Um, when it comes to you doing your prayers on time. I am lucky that I live in a Muslim country now in Dubai, so it is quite common and you have prayer rooms easily available. So you can just pray whenever it's time to pray. Um, but I'm sure no one will mind if you just take five minutes and you go into a quiet room and just pray. And again, this will make you have that feeling of it is Ramadan and I am making an extra effort to actually stay on top of things and hopefully change my habit forever. So. Another thing here is just to focus on your intentions, on doing the things that you can without putting too much pressure on yourself. So another thing is we need to take breaks, but I think we also need to plan our breaks a bit better now because, you know, when you're eating, you plan out your breaks around food, you plan your breaks around tea time, lunch, but now that you don't have the need to eat, so some people might skip breaks, but you still need your breaks just to stop for a minute, breathe, do something else, you know, go outside, get some sun, get some air, but you do need the breaks because you still need to not rush too much into the work so that you will get tired a lot quicker during the day. And finally, just stay hydrated and make good choices when it comes to food. I know it is really hard, I'm a victim of that too, is that at iftar you just want to eat things that you've been craving throughout the day and the things you crave throughout the day are not going to be vegetables or apples, right? So you're going to crave all of the sugary stuff or the fried food and it's okay to have some but do not overindulge. Do not overeat because soon after iftar you feel sick and then you can't do anything, you can't have dinner and then the next day it's just kind of like ruined because of this. Um, so therefore just try to balance what you're eating, making sure you are eating a lot of vegetables, a lot of protein and making sure you're having the one meal that you have at night is balanced, right? And just 
of course have the little sweets and treats like you, you're not gonna stop that but just have a balanced meal and of course hydrate when you can right and this is something that I've been reading about a lot of people tell you to have three glasses of water at iftar and then throughout the night try to space out three more glasses of water and have three glasses of water at sehri but what I do is I have my trusted little water bottle here which helps me to track how much water I'm drinking and I just drink that a, a few of that at iftar a few of that during the night and a few of that in the morning just to make sure that i'm hydrating and of course you can drink other stuff like tea coffee juice and all of that but try to reduce caffeine because you can't have caffeine during the day and i, I know a lot of my friends are struggling because they love their coffee so much so you will get withdrawal headaches if you can't have your caffeine during the day so try to avoid caffeine even at night because then in the morning your brain is still like well where's my caffeine so yeah so that's that so these are the five kind of things that i've put into practice and have helped me while working during ramadan so far it's been good it's been a week and a half or so while i'm filming this and it's been okay um very tired obviously uh, but also not too bad and um, my work has been okay i usually work till six then i have a star till eight and then after eight sometimes I've had to work for about half an hour an hour more but not too bad for consulting that's not too bad um so I can't complain so let's see how the rest of it goes and just a reminder to you know make the most of this month it's a great month spend time with your family and friends you know and make sure to give to charity for those who are less privileged than we are and you know spread the happiness be grateful and you know make dua for me pray for me um pray for everyone around pray for the world and i hope that this video was helpful in any way and if you were new to ramadan thank you for watching the video and i hope that this was um helpful in any way for you to understand what it is but if you have any questions about ramadan very happy to answer please reach out and um enjoy the rest of your ramadan and i hope to see you around soon bye